Hello everyone and welcome to week four of Summer Challenge 2021 Tales and Tales. In this week's program we are going to be making wildflower seed bombs with flower seeds native to our area that you can use to pretty up your backyard. Let's get started. All right, you guys, so here are the things that would be included in the grab and go kit and the things you will need to make your own wildflower seed bombs. So the first thing you're gonna need is soil. It's recommended that you use a peat free compost. So a compost without peat in it um, because it is actually more environmentally friendly. The next thing you're gonna need is red potter's clay powder. And then the last thing you'll need are wildflower seeds. Um, so in order to choose what kind of seeds you want, um, first of all, you want to make sure that you are choosing something that is native to your area. Um, if you are located in Western Pennsylvania, you will find a link in the video description that has a chart um, explaining native plants in our area. The next thing you want to do is decide whether or not you want an annual or a perennial. Um, so annuals are something that you plant in the ground, they flower, they bloom, and then they die. For a perennial, you actually will get to see this plant come back over and over again each year, um, provided that it is well taken care of. So what I have chosen and what is included in the grab and go kits are um, Black Eyed Susans. These are also called Rudbeckias, Rudbeckias. And um, it's suggested that they are planted in our area sometime between April and June. So um, once you get these made, then you're gonna want to get them planted as quickly as possible. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started in making our seed bombs. The only really important thing we need to remember is a ratio. You want to have a ratio of five parts compost to three parts clay powder to one part seeds. Now we are not going to get even close to one part seeds with this. Um, really, it depends on how large your seeds are. As you can see, these are very, very tiny. So we're actually just going to eyeball um, how many seeds we want to put in each bomb. In this container, I have 10 teaspoons of the soil. I have 6 teaspoons of the powder, and then I just have an entire packet of seeds. This is going to make several seed bombs, but that's going to be great because it'll give me a few to um, show you and give you a demonstration of how to um, throw them and plant them. Some things that you're going to need to um, get on your own are a mixing bowl and a spoon, um, a plate or a baking tray um, with parchment paper on it or something to line your um, formed bombs out to uh, dry, and then you're going to need some water. Um, and there's no exact measurement of how much water you're going to need. You're going to kind of have to feel your mixture and see how it is forming. Okay. Um, one last thing before we get started, you can also, you don't have to be exactly precise with this. Um, the recipe that I'm following suggests that you do five handfuls of soil, five handfuls of clay and a handful of seeds, um, which is not an exact measurement by any means. So really don't worry about getting this exactly right or exactly perfect. As long as your ratios are close, you should be fine. Okay, so let's get it started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get my soil in here. Next thing I'm gonna do is pour in my clay powder. And then last, I am going to pour in my seeds. Like I said, I'm using an entire um, container. What I would recommend for you guys to do is kind of, if you're just making one um, seed ball, then just kind of like, you can wet your finger. Um, I'll do that. So you can wet your finger and then pick up like a little finger full of seeds. And that should be enough for um, but honestly, that's more than enough for one seed bomb. You could probably get a couple more seed bombs out of that, but it's really up to you. Um, if you get a plant that likes to cluster, 
which Black Eyed Susans do, um, then it's less of a concern how many seeds you're, you're putting in each bomb because they are happy to crowd each other. Okay, so all three of our ingredients are in here. So we're just gonna go ahead and mix that up. Okay, so we have everything mixed together. So how comes the tricky part? What we are going to do is take our water and we're just gonna slowly, slowly, carefully add this to our mixture. As you add the water, you wanna make sure that you're stirring your mix or just getting in there with your hands. And basically, you wanna keep adding water until this is at a point where you can form it into like a little ball. Um, if it's too wet, it's gonna be like a shaggy mess and it's not gonna stick together, it's not gonna clump. If it's too dry, it's not going to stick together either. So really, you just gotta play around and um, see what is going to work best. So I'm just gonna add a little bit there and start mixing. Okay, so I can already feel that it's getting stickier, for sure. I don't think we're quite there yet. I think we might need a little bit more, but look how quickly that absorbed that. It's already clumping like that, and that was just a tiny bit of water. I'd say probably um, probably less than a tablespoon is what I poured in. So definitely add this gradually and just kind of play around with it. And don't be afraid to touch it because, you know, it's going to be easiest to tell if it's formable if you try to form it. Okay, so it's basically there, but I want to add a tiny, tiny bit more water. Not very much, though. Literally just going to add, like, that much. Oop. Okay. Alright, and if you look at that, I would say that that is pretty much perfect. Um, and I'm going to start forming the balls. With this, you can kind of look at it like you're just, you know, shaping cookies <laughs> or truffles or something of that nature or shaping Play-Doh if you want to go, you know, abstract with it. Okay, so I'm just picking up probably about, I'm going to say that that's like a heaping teaspoon, <laughs> I'm using baking terms, but I don't know, just like a pinchful, um, however big you want your bombs to be, I'm just going to press it together to make a ball shape. You can definitely feel the clay is very sticky, but not overly sticky. Okay, so there we go. We have our first seed bomb. Looks like a nice little chocolate truffle. Probably wouldn't taste very good though. Okay, so we're going to go in with can make these bombs as small or as big as you'd like. Um, if you want to make one large seed bomb to throw, um, that's totally fine. If you want to make a bunch of small ones to, to throw, then that's also totally fine. It really is up to you. Okay, I'm just going to take what's left in there. All right, so we got five little seed bombs here. I'm just going to space them out kind of evenly on here. It doesn't really matter, but you know, sometimes you like things to be spaced out evenly. Um, so I'm going to wash my hands and then I will be back to tell you about the next steps. Okay, you guys, so now our seed bombs have to dry and to do that, they need to bake in the sun. So you can either place them on a sunny windowsill, you can place them outside somewhere where they're not gonna get knocked around. Um, someplace safe basically for three hours. They're gonna need to bake for three hours. Alrighty guys, so once your seed bombs have finished baking in the sun, then what you're gonna do is throw them. Um, so make sure that you are throwing these on your own property or if you're in another space, make sure that you have permission to throw the seed bombs. 
If you do not have a yard or um, an area where you can throw them just outside, then you can also throw them into like a terracotta pot and have a nice little um, plant that you can care for that you can put in your room or your living room or wherever. If you do not want to throw your seed bombs, you can also just um, plant them about, I'm going to say about a half inch underground. Um, if you want to leave them whole, you can do that. If you want to break them up and scatter them, also an option. Um, however you want to do it, totally fine. This week's beanstack activity is to um, go obtain a bark rubbing or a leaf pressing. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your journal and then you're going to use either like a piece of charcoal, chalk pastel, a crayon will work, even just a pencil. Um, and you're going to find a tree that has some nice bark that you like or a nice leaf that you like. And what you're going to do is place either the bark or the leaf behind your page and then you will just rub the writing utensil you're using onto the paper and what it's going to do is it's going to transfer onto your paper. So that is the beanstack activity of the week. I hope you guys had fun making this week's craft and I hope to see you guys next week.